<clears throat> All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to another Monday here at the Stay and Hope Open Mic presented by the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. It is Monday, October 4th. It's already October. I can't believe it. This year is going by so quickly. Um, and we're still here. We are all still here, and we got another great show for you tonight. We have uh, a whole list of performers. My name is Richie Marufo. I'm going to be your host. I am the project. I mean, I'm going to be. The, I'm the project director, and I'm happy to introduce our host tonight. Um, just a quick note: last week we had a very abrupt, unceremonious ending. It's actually it ended very funny because my computer finally, after a whole year of doing this, froze during a show, completely went blank. <laughs> while i was performing by the way so it was kind of funny hearing everybody like scramble like what do we do what do we do oh is it is he there is he still there um it was a very dramatic pause so anyway i'm happy to be back in case that does happen again uh my co-host uh you know usually is here and, and helps out and also if i do get kicked off again the stream will stay running because he is designated as co-host. Uh, but um, this show is about you guys. It's about the performers. It's about the community. And as always, if you're tuning in for the first time, make sure to show lots of love. Those of you watching on YouTube, let us know in the comments, like, who did you enjoy? You know, which of their lines stuck up, stuck out with you? Like, what made, like, what's the line that made you feel something like knocked you back or punched you in the stomach metaphorically, maybe taught you something? You know, there's a lot of ways to go about this, but let us know in the comments. Uh, of course, leave a like. The more you like it, you know, share it to people, share it with people who would like to make, who likes this kind of thing. You know, we do have a lot of poetry tonight, uh, which I always love. And we're going to travel all around the world tonight, which I also love. Uh, but without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and pass it over to tonight's host. Um, I always know we're in good hands with him because he's been here every single one of these since we started last April. Um, and he killed it last time. I know he's going to do it again today. So without further ado, let's go and welcome today's host. Let's go and welcome Mr. Monday Night Kit Ren. Take it away, man. It's all you now. It's all me. It's all me. But that's not true because I have all y'all too. That's fun. But we're going to start with a little invocation, just a real quick cover poem. Uh, this is Alone by Jack Gilbert. I never thought Michiko would come back after she died, but if she did, I knew it would be as a lady in a long white dress. It is strange that she has returned to somebody's Dalmatian. I meet the man walking her on a leash almost every week. He says good morning and I stoop down to calm her. He said once that she was never like that with other people. Sometimes she is tethered on their lawn when I go by, if nobody is around, I sit on the grass. When she finally quiets, she puts her head in my lap and we watch each other's eyes as I whisper in her soft ears. She cares nothing about the mystery. She likes it best when I touch her head and tell her small things about my days and our friends. That makes her happy the way it always did. That was Alone by Jack Gilbert, but we are not alone. In addition to loved ones here and gone and dogs here and gone, we have each other. And coming up first to the mic is someone who's been with us for over a year now, has ingrained himself to a lot of our local stuff. And we are richer for it and we are richer for knowing him. Please welcome Michael Sindler. Oh, to that's the stage. a very kind introduction. <laughs> Uh, I will go ahead and start things out by putting the word out there for lighthouseriders.org here in Denver and all around the world. Thanks to the internet. So many good things going on there. Just check it out. Um, I'm going to start with a couple short pieces that are, I think, are kind of seasonal as we get into this whole autumn thing. This first one is called an arrangement. The shoots and blades that grow in spring, I would not kill for anything. I don't pick flowers out of yards where gardeners have toiled hard, but come the autumn when they die, 
when what was green turns brown and dry, I'll snap them off. I'll bring them home, give second life to what is grown. I do not have a thumb of green. My garden's gleaned from where I've been. Independent of the season, timeless beauty is the reason my apartment's full of vases collected from all the places I walk by on my daily route. Passing, I hear them calling out. We still have magic left to bring. And so for me, it's always spring. And the <laughs> second piece is a little different, but it has a sort of fall theme in its way, uh, more portentous fall. And, but it's called It's Fall. First fragile leaf falls is scarcely noticed until other feeble parched brown skins flutter to cold earth or swept away or interned captured casualties. Tree stands stripped of all color, denuded, helpless. And so when the ax man strikes, its fall is little noticed. And I'm going to do a series of three uh, triolets that I wrote. Uh, we, a uh, class I was doing at Lighthouse, we were at the library and went to the genealogy department, which the Denver Public Library has an incredible genealogy department. But uh, so these three triolets are things I wrote there. Uh, first one is migration. Across each continent, we roam through forest deserts, transverse seas, each step a temporary home. Across each continent, we've roamed each acre under heaven's dome, finding some momentary peace. Across each continent, we've roamed through forests, deserts, transverse seas. Uh, wait a second, oh, that was actually the third one, but I'll go back. And uh, this one is called The Genealogist. He helps them find their ancestors, reveals personal histories, rooms long hidden behind closed doors. He helps them find their ancestors, the heroes and the minotaurs, mysterious family trees, he helps them find their ancestors, reveals personal histories. And the last one of these is called The Weight. The weight of genealogy resting for ages on these shells, tree of human biology, the weight of genealogy, tales spliced into chronology, the seeds of what becomes ourselves, the weight of genealogy resting for ages on these shelves. And putting on the hat, I will go with my favorite fiction writer and one of my absolute favorite passages from anything. And this is from The Ground Beneath Her Feet by Salman Rushdie. Disorientation is the loss of the East. Ask any navigator, the East is what you sail by. Loss, uh, lose the East and you lose your bearings, your certainties, your knowledge of what is and what may be, perhaps even your life. Where was that star you followed to that manger? That's right, the East orients. That's the official version. The language says so, and you should never argue with the language. But let's just suppose, what if the whole deal, orientation, knowing where you are and so on, what if it's all just a scam? What if all of it, home, kinship, the whole enchilada, is just the biggest, most truly global and centuries oldest piece of brainwashing? Suppose that it's only when you dare to let go that your real life begins. When you're whirling free of the mothership, when you cut your rope, slip your chain, 
step off the mat, go absence without leave, scram, bamoose, whatever. Suppose it's then and only then that you're actually free to act, to lead the life nobody tells you how to live or when or why, in which nobody orders you to go forth and die for them or for God or comes to get you because you broke one of the rules or because you're one of those people who are for reasons which unfortunately you can't be given, simply not allowed. Suppose you've got to go through the feeling of being lost into the chaos and beyond. You've got to accept the loneliness, the wild panic of losing your moorings, the vertiginous terror of the horizon spinning round and round like the edge of a coin tossed in the air. You won't do it. Most of you won't do it. The world's head laundry is pretty good at washing brains. Don't jump off that cliff. Don't walk through that door. Don't step into that waterfall. Don't take the chance. Don't step across that line. Don't ruffle my sensitivities. I'm warning you. Now, don't make me mad. You're doing it. You're making me mad. You won't have a chance. You haven't got a prayer. You're finished. You're history. You're less than nothing. You're dead to me, dead to your whole family, your nation, your race, everything you ought to love more than life and listen to like your master's voice and follow blindly and bow down before and worship and obey. You're dead. You hear me? Forget about it, you stupid bastard. I don't even know your name. Just imagine you did it. You stepped off the edge of the earth or through the fatal waterfall. And there it was, the magic valley at the end of the universe, the blessed kingdom of the air, great music everywhere. You breathe the music in and out. It's your element now. It feels better than belonging in your lungs. Fina was the first one of us to do it. Ormus jumped second. And I, as usual, brought up the rear. And we can argue all night about why did we jump or were we pushed, but you can't deny we all did it. We three kings of disorient were. And I'm the only one that lived to tell the tale. Thank you very much. Hmm. Nice, that man. Was excellent. Read. Yeah, Michael Sindler. Uh, daring wow. to put pros in the cover poem spot, but you did it. You acquitted yourself very well. Uh, where else can the people find you besides Lighthouse Writers? Um, well, next thing I really got coming up is until November, I'll be doing a feature at Like a Block for the Blue. And then January, I'll be doing tumble words. I'm sure there'll be some things in between then, but uh, I'll keep y'all informed as, as dates come. Thanks so much. All right. Tumble words gang gang taking over. Uh, well, we're going next from the Rockies to the Alleghenies. Uh, our next performer, they are a fascinating person uh, that you can bring up any topic with them and they'll have a long a uh, personal story about it. And that's something that's pretty in, pretty impressive. They've fit a lot of living into their life and here's hoping they have uh, a few more lives to lead. Uh, please welcome to the stage now, Vail Mark. Hi. My voice is pretty rough today, but we're gonna see what we can do. I have to read this, even though I wasn't planning to, because this is my poem about the ground beneath her feet. It's called Eurydice, or Vena Descends. She is always in photographs, frozen, like she exists only in flashbulb memory, as an image, an idea, an ideal. His genius is lauded, and his vigor and his disdain. She is not permitted. She is loose and loud, or cold, frigid, and unforgiven. The same eyes see them into black and white avatars. He is Genesis, and she is Revelations. 
creation and the deadly shell. Her own genius shines in every word, glance, touch, and they acknowledge none of it. When she fell beneath the streets that raised her, beneath the earth she could never clean from her face, they stood bewildered as he followed her down. Order never should come after chaos, they cried. They would not see how he had only ever followed, planting in ground she'd already broken. And I'm going to read a couple. What I planned to read was a couple of work in progress pieces. So I just read these yesterday and today. So we'll see how they go. Paper is not smooth. It catches on my fingerprints and sticks just enough to say, I have been here. And nothing will ever be exactly the same. I use ring bound books for writing. There is a small Canadian company that makes a hardback, ring-bound, 300-page, all-recycled journal. It's mass in my hands, rough paper and cardboard, rings biting lightly, and the swing of its weight as I flip to my page, like my mind opening and swinging itself wide and free into the world. I am anachronistic. Thoughts all somehow smoother onto paper than pixel. I write with fountain pens. I blame the first person who gifted me with one. She must have known, seeing my caressing of the stationary section, that I would be an easy mark. They make marks so easily. A brush of the nib swinging from my fingertips on one reality rough page. And all is revealed. And a last short one. Now someone is waiting for water. Now someone rises into emptiness that cannot be filled without leaving someone else empty. Now someone is burning brush to cook the rice, the oil, the salt, all that had been given in a small bowl. Now, someone is watching green brown and collapse and dissolve into the rot of their everything. Now, someone is waiting for water in the hot sun and the sharp wind all day. Now, someone is burning brush to warm empty, dry hands cold as the night, as the world. Now someone is digging to make space for a child who will always stay empty. Now someone is waiting for water. Thank you. Wow, that was... Thank you so much for letting us be part of the refinement process for those newer pieces. Uh, and you can uh, put your info in the chat when you feel up to. Dale, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay, and we go from there, uh, we go to uh, South Euclid, Ohio, still along the river. And uh, we meet someone who's, who has the wisdom of many lives himself. Uh, he is the poet laureate of South Euclid, Ohio. And he listed himself as the poet Meister, which uh, I don't know. That seems a little arrogant, but <laughs> I I think you can pull it off. So, Doc Jenning, please step to the mic. Let's see what you got. <laughs> Thank you. For my first poem, I would like to share it and also to have Kemlin join me. I want to screen share it. I uh, can't, no screen sharing. It should, it should yes. be turned on. Yeah, you can screen it, share. It is turned on. Okay, great. Okay. Iliad eons of time, 
Sky glows in pinprick passage and streaming symphony of stars across eldritch ebon veil of night. Music rises, echoing endlessly into incorrect chorale of colors. Galaxies beckon from beyond, yielding basso background. All gather, building brusquely in erroneous operatic expressions and killiad eons of time. Buxom ballets de tout in sensual swirls of elegance. Melding with powerful peons of life and soaring serenades of love. Caparison crescendos of passion stir ecstatic bolide of entropy into endless ebullient eternity. Pulsing polyphony of pleasure encoded climax of unabashed afterglow. Thank you, Camlin. Thank you, Doc. And Camlin is going to be my featured reader for our nights on the 17th at 2.30 in the afternoon uh, Eastern time. So please join us. Okay. And I will be putting that in the chat. My second poem, Forge of Passion. He gazed at her mind wheel whirling, churning, responding to inviting beauty. She waited, trusting, exposed, open, warming to his gaze. Love breathed fires of passion and they melted into each other. And my final poem tonight is titled Rhapsodies, Sunscapes, and Dreamscapes. Rhapsodies of sunlight play across Gaia's form in Ario's turn of warmth, of light and shadow, of day and night, amid flowering of romantic exaltation. Stimulate and stir life's quickening. Sunscapes and shades of dark shape the joy of earth song amid memories of seasons. Seasons come and gone, a diapason of dreams arouse excitement and growth. Exaltations of moonlight dance amid dappled shadows and lime clouds neath Noxus' jaspic sky. Escort hypnos bringing sleep. Dreamscapes of love flourish in graceful gardens of hope, in peaceful pools of passion, bloom in fragrances of the heart, in colors of the multiverse, ascend in the glory of ecstasy. Thank you. All right, no more objections. First South Euclid, next the world. Doc Janning, next noise world. <laughs> and Thank you. Okay, and coming up next, we're coming back to our home, to our center here in El Paso, Texas. I want to reassure everyone that we do not have any favoritism here, but we do have a couple of favorites uh, next to someone who, without whom I would not be uh, the writer I am, I would be a completely different person. Is it nature or is it nurture? It's kind of both. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Robin Schofield. Thank you. Uh, all right, I'm gonna read uh, some new stuff, newly typed that is. I found it in a notebook, a relatively new notebook, only a couple of years old. And I put them in my Nightmare Woman collection. So the first one is called Ordinary life 
in the exploding universe. She is the fire in the valley. She fixes dinner every night. She revolves around the star. She eats crackers and honey. She turns the radio to Tejano. She makes coffee three times. She prays twice at night. She knocks on wood just in case. She is the fox in the hen house. She exercises portion control. She is hungry now and then. She knows what the raven knows. Oh, whoops, where'd I go? Oh, there we go. Nightmare woman sings of a dry river. A flash of sunlit red wings against black bird body, quick as a meteorite, the red-winged blackbird. Hear him call out a warning, light pole his perch, refuge in the stand of river willows. Green blossoms stand like soldiers at dawn, the tremolo of hummingbird beat as he rises and falls to the rhythm of our steps. A cool wind spells out the promise of an underground channel, a dictionary of delay. Spanish broom blossoms across borderland drive, bright yellow under a half moon waning. How chilly the shadows are, cottonwood and tornillo oak Sprout leaves, shaped like minnows. Swallows dive for the insects, daub mud under the art craft bridge to house their young. Yeah. And uh, this one again from Nightmare Woman is called The River Does Not Remember. As the sunlight changes, the heron moves with it above the puddle, careful with her shadow that she might not warn the fish. As I am not careful with my shadow, spilling it all over the bright white sidewalk, it's midnight ink running with the waterless river, riding my body into the wind. And then um, this one is called Song of Three Eyelids. You might know that uh, birds have three eyelids and one of them is uh, transparent. I forget what it's called. It begins with an M. All right, so Song of Three Eyelids. One, to keep out the dust in springtime wind. Two, to keep out the blood and guts of a dying culture. Three, to keep out whirlwinds and blame. One, to keep out pollen and fluffy seeds in the wind. Two, to keep out TV commercials and daily news. Three, to keep out rescues from the cliff. One, to keep out harmful pollutants. Two, to keep out hunger at a young age. Three, to keep out old age and death. One, to keep out the helicopter tilting in the wind. Two, to keep out the prostitute dying in the street. Three, to keep out the roof that leaks. One, to keep out grasshoppers and squash bugs. Two, to keep out fungus and thieves. Three, to keep out whips and knives. Okay, so those are my newish uh, Nightmare Woman poems. And I have, uh, I have three books, two of them are available. And um, one of them is available from Mouthfield Press. And uh, the other one you can write to me about. So I'll, I'll put that in the chat. All right. All right. Sunflower Cantos from Mouthfield Press. And if you want Flo, which won the uh, Southwest Library Association's Book Award, you'll have to write to the woman herself. That was Robin Schofield. All right. That that uh, transparent eyelid is called the nictitating membrane. That's with an N. Go. Of course, Doc would know that. Thank you. I knew it started. With <laughs>
I'll never learn how to pronounce it. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the great thing about this group. You ask a question, you're going to get the answer. And it might be right. Uh, but we're going now uh, to uh, over to South Georgia, where we have someone uh, that we met for the first time last week. And I'm so glad I get to say this out loud instead of typing it. The only thing better than a first time reader is a second time reader. So please welcome to the stage, Tina Bailey. Hi, I'm gonna read a piece. I have little scatter bits and pieces that uh, maybe I should combine into one document, I don't know. But as I was scanning, I came across this one that I wrote a little while ago. It's called Outside the Window. Outside the window is mystery. Outside the window are dreams of a future, a door to walk through, darkness, opportunity, and the chance to do it right this time. It also holds a place that is unknown. It holds the future and my heart. What is outside my window, I do not know. But it is where I put my hope. I hold it close. Afraid of what it could, me could mean if I dare to open the window. Would I lose my footing and fall? Away from everything I hold dear? In order to meet who I really am? Or is it just a reflection that I see telling me, look, who you are is already here, looking back at you. If you only open your eyes and dare to see the gritty reality of true life, it's ups and downs, bumps and falls, rebounds and joys of simply being alive. Why is it so hard to see? The things that are, are as close as a breath, yet feel so far away. I am looking. I search deep inside that space calmly, looking for that window of reflection. So many voices around me, but oh, to know and hear the uncensored heart and vision of a life, my life, your life, a life that is possible. It is outside the window, inside the mirror of my heart. I do not know, but I look and I dream and summon the courage to find what lies outside, beyond that window. Why look? Why search? Why do I dare? In the waves and the snow, the rain and the wind, life flows. But that is it? Seeing out my side, my window? Uh, the window is about seeing beyond the boundary of my own existing. Seeing, seeing outside the window. And from that, I want to dare something. And I need you. I need somebody. Maybe you, Kim Lynn. Just to give me one word. Something to start. As I try to move in. First Elation. Line. Elation. Elation. <sighs> Elation is that space that comes out, that can envelop me, that can flow, that, help, that can help me recover that space that once filled a room. Yet, to fit into your world, I made it small. 
so that I will be accepted into your tiny existence of what reality is. But that's not me. The elation fights and it grows and it finds a place to rebirth. They can find that phoenix that will no longer fall. It's going to grow. It's going to find its place. It's going to fill up all the space that made you uncomfortable. Because I am me. I will no longer become that tiny ember that makes you comfortable. Deal with me. See me. Feel me. Because I am who I will be. Whether you like it or not. I will take up space. I will make you uncomfortable because there's a place for me that you no longer can control. I will become elated. I will grow. I will flow. And I will be me. Yes! That's Woo! Who I know! Yes! I know this person! She's amazing! <laughs> See what I hey, brought wonderful. to you, Richie? See what I brought to you? This <laughs> amazing creature. It, Thank you. First, uh, yeah. improv let, that, let that improvisation guide you. The first improv artist to cross our digital stage, I believe. No, 19 months really? of this, we, I believe so. 19 months of this and we still find something new. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Maybe someone could give me a, a, a tape of that because when I do this improv, I never remember what I do because it's always spontaneous. <laughs> okay. Well, it's on YouTube now forever, so. Yeah, it's on the <laughs> YouTube know, and Richie, I'll get the time yeah. steps. Yeah, I'll it's get recorded. the time steps up probably around Wednesday. So, oh. and Richie just <laughs> offered in the chat, offered you uh, a copy of the video. So, Thank you. We're as accommodating as possible. I think that's why people like us. <laughs> or maybe we're just that strong. Uh. Maybe it's both. But in <laughs> any case, in any case, we must move on up to uh, the mountains of Washington, because everywhere's got mountains, you just gotta look for them. And we are, hang on. Well, I do not see them in the chat now. I do not see Letty in the uh, thing. Okay, slight change of plans, slight change of plans. We're gonna move on back to El Paso. Uh, Cause like I said, we don't play favorites here, but we do have favorites. That is a different thing. And, and uh, now we're coming over to the military side of town, but to a not decidedly non-military person. They are the MV Lee of this whole scene. They are Lee MS. Please come to the stage. Hi, hi. All right. So because it's my favorite month, I have started doing some uh, like writing poetry based on some of my favorite horror movies so far. I have a pretty lengthy mm -hmm. list. So I'm going to start with that today. Um, the first one I have, it's called Ritual. This is only in English, so here it goes. When I can find myself on the aftermath of post-trauma, flashes of memories lost in the mist or trapped in the mud, all that is left is to seek them and hollow the ground so I can bury them for the last time, lest they pull me to the grind or down roads not taken before. I can catch glimpses of me in the mist, hidden on top of the trees and some others underneath this dirt, parts human, parts inhuman, and parts I still do not know of. When I can't find myself, I keep my distance and watch as I unfold. I can see fire deep in my eyes, lighting my path, the taste of flame still caught in my tongue, 
When I seek myself out of the mist, I can see them caught in my branches, lost in my haze. When I can't find myself and instead find the intruders who dare stumble into my forest, I like to see their memories burning and their despair. And I rise back in to me. One. The next one is called Miki Papalotu. Um, so there, I, I think it's a worldwide um, um, superstition about the, uh, what is it called? The black witch uh, moth, which is a type of moth uh, endemic to Mexico as well. Um, and we call it in Nahuatl is Miki Papalotu. So this one is based on a pretty recent movie and first in Spanish and in English. En las noches donde no brilla ni la luna y sus estrellas, rondará entre candelabros hasta encontrar el lugar donde llevará el mensaje de un último aliento. Cuatro puntos cruzados al entrar el umbral, seis piernas trepando nucas mortecinas, dejando atrás ósculos de muerte trazando, trazado sobre piel febril y el último beso de vida posados en labios agrietados. Sin rastro alguno se desvanecerá antes que llegue el sol que alumbre los cuerpos inertes yaciendo sobre camas frías. English. During dark nights, when the moon and her stars don't shine, it will wait among the chandeliers until it finds the place where its message it shall take of an impeding last breath. It shall fly across four points upon entering the threshold, six legs climbing the dying skin, leaving behind the kisses of death stroked over feverish flesh and the last kiss of life perched upon shaft lips. Without a trace, it shall fade before the sun comes around to eliminate the still bodies lying on cold beds. Finally, uh, this is called Bajo la Piel. Um, just trailer warning for body horror. I just love body horror. So comes with the dysphoria and being queer. So this is body horror. Um, Spanish and English. Trotan de la piel manojos de arañas y tiro, jalo, estiro, abro poco a poco este pellejo que me esconde. Caen de la piel al piso salpicando cual sangre negra, café, millones de patas largas trepando por costillas, anidando en el estómago, carcomiendo poco a poco de adentro hacia afuera. Escapan de entre labios agrietados y en pez, en pez escurridizos y pierdo la cuenta del 1 al 2 al 10 hasta el 600. Corren al compás de alaridos sofocados nuevamente por otro manojo de animalejos cayendo al piso, cual vómito. Otro seis y otro seis. Si tan solo pudiera arrancarme las raíces y salir de este cuerpo, despellejar el escocer que llevo dentro. Si tan solo pudiera arrancarme los pétalos. Un padre nuestro, dos aves marías, rosario en mano. No creo en nada. Le rezo a nada. Esper esperando a callar el desfilar de pisadas tras pisadas tras pisadas y el zumbido de la voz durmiente. Again, this is in English and it's called Under My Skin. Spiders sprout from underneath the skin and I pull, draw out, stretch open little by little this flesh that hides me. From the skin to the floor they fall, splashing like black brown blood. Millions of long legs climbing up my ribs, nesting in my stomach, eating away little by little from the inside out. Elusive centipedes flee between cracked lips and I lose count from one to two to 10 up to 600. They run to the beat of my shrieking, suffocating again by another splatter of vermin dropping to the floor like vomit, another six and another six. If I only could pull out my roots and get out of this body, Skin the stinging pain I carry inside me. If only I could tear off my petals. One Lord's Prayer, two Hail Marys, rosary in hand. I don't believe in anything. I pray to nothing. Waiting to hush down the endless marsh of footsteps after footsteps and the buzzing behind my sleeping voice. That's it. As Richie would say, that is everything. Uh, sorry to bite your line, Richie, but I had to. I had to. Uh, Lee, um, you are one of the pioneers of this space in terms of having a little sign with all your handles. Do you have that sign right now? I do not, but you can find it on the bottom somewhere on the screen there or there. I don't know. But it's uh, at cadaveres, as in cadavers, without the with an extra E. <laughs> Underscore literarios, as in literary, with 
instead of a why it's iOS. I don't freaking know. Just like it's there. Cada vez literario. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Lee. All right. And from there, we go to the forests of Maine, where uh, I'm a little disappointed I didn't get a little funny little story in the bio, such as your uh, previous uh, exploits of uh, winning a watermelon eating contest and so on. But I will do my best to not take that personally, because next is everyone salutes for El Generalissimo, Brian Franco. Well, I can say that I once won a, con uh, a toenail chewing contest. That's not really true, but it's a good story. Okay. Um, Was anybody second? <laughs> um, oh, there were, there were, there were, there were, there were two dozen people in the contest. Yes. I live, I would grew up in Mobile, Alabama. Rednecks love to chew their toenails. I didn't really win because, you know, but my, my father paid to let me win. So that's the way it worked. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes a poem doesn't feel right till it, till it finally gets a title for me. So I wrote this, uh, it's a, it's a five cube. It's a poem with five haiku stanzas. And I just wrote the, the title just now. It's entitled, My Soul Always Sends a Nice Postcard When It Goes on Vacation. My soul has been lost and been refound quite a bit in my short lifetime. It likes to run off on whims and go hitchhiking through roads not taking, taken, where it gets picked up by forms of transportation like wind and eagles. That is how I know I am one with breezes and a friend of birds. Maybe if I just tried to write normal poetry, my soul could settle. Um, the next poem I am going to read tonight to you. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to take this old poem called We Are Weed Whackers. It was written during, during some, I don't know, some sort of a thing, probably within the last year and a half, uh, some sort of a workshop. We Are Weed Whackers. When a weed grows through a crack in pavement, it, get, it gets labeled disruptor. It will be evicted from sidewalk, driveway, or road, weed whacked. It will be yanked out or sprayed with a chemical not so good for the environment or human respiratory systems. Sometimes these invaders of hard surfaces are executed with ultra skinny flamethrowers, future flowers devoured by man-made firestorms. Sometimes amongst the gray and black urban landscape, a daisy will peekaboo through a crack in a sidewalk announcing that sidewalk cracks don't break mama's backs. If we went back in time before there was a sidewalk or street, there might've been a forest of trees or field of wildflowers before all the humans came along and said, this looks like a nice spot for a house. Then came another house and another and another and horses and carriages and cars and paved roads and neighborhoods with sidewalks where people feel it necessary to torch innocent daisies from gray concrete. But before all the man-made existed, the daisies existed in harmony with other flowers and trees and birds and squirrels and the human so that happened along with the true disruptive. Um, and this one is a true story. I wrote it in 2014 after this incident happened. It's called Phoenix Corner Reports Main Man Dies of Auto Poetic Asphyxiation. It happened at a cool, hip coffee house with exposed brick walls as tall as the Great Wall of China. I willingly stood back into a corner in front of a microphone waiting to be judged by random strangers. Welcome to the world of slam poetry. Earlier, I was asked if I was nervous. I said, no, I was as well practiced as could be. There were no kinks in my armor. I chose to wear a Madras shirt. A a nice matching pair of shorts and blue suede shoes. Six poets went before me, performing poems replete with audience mmms, ahs, as woes, and a couple of what with question marks. 
my name was announced. I walked held, head held high to the mic, said the first line, said the second line, the fourth line, the fifth line, the sixth line. Then my brain said, you have to go back. But it was too late. My brain protested by going on strike. I forgot my line. I stood silent, waiting, waited to remember it. The audience snapped fingers and loudly whispered, you got to pull it, you got to pull it. So I continued. My pissed off brain left out the first item in a list of three. My performance was rife with miss out of order words. I was choking and there was nothing Dr. Heimlich could do to save my life. I exited the venue after the scores were read. Outside, I breathed in 90 degree Arizona night air. The left out lines escaped through my ears. They rose over my head, dancing like cobras entranced by a snake charmer's flute. Then the music stopped. My worms aimed for my throat, coiling around my neck in a slinky like choke hold. They squeezed tightly. They complained that the intimacy we shared must have meant more to them than it did to me. How could I have forgotten their names in public in front of a fire capacity crowd about words? Words can cause unintentional hurt, but in the end, words are words. Words become the past as fast as present can become past. I had to go back inside to perform another poem. The words that professed their undying devotion to me decidedly slithered away into the Arizona heat. They knew their time had come and gone. They also knew that all poets are serial polygamists with every poem they write, and a poet will always find a way back to a poem again and again and again. Thank you, everyone. Oh, and I also want to thank Lee M.S. because that last poem, Lee M.S., was like the best I've ever heard you. That was so awesome. I just am always awed by you. And I want to thank Kit for being an excellent host this evening. Thank Brian for being an excellent uh, reader. As and also always. remember, and first and third Monday of every month, first woo! and third Monday of every month, Cafe Generalissimo. And I'll put all that in the in the in the chat. Cafe yes. Generalissimo, a very chill place. Very, very cool general. And he does have a book on the way. He is part of the Fables Next Ten. And I've seen it, and it's good. Uh, Coming up next, though, we must move on. Uh, we're going to Washington, D.C., where, oh, someone repping the set, someone with the T-shirt already. Hell yeah. Way to go, man. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage uh, Martin Parker, Park William. Thanks, Kit. Uh, pardon me while I go off camera here to be able to read the poems on my phone because of my vision here. But... Um, I want to do a few elegies. I've been thinking about some friends this last weekend. Uh, this first one is for my best friend from middle school. And it's called Victory. You float upon subconscious streams that can make it hard to breathe when sounds of jazz inflected dreams start to swing on a time warp breeze. So did the man whose prejudice ever let you take the wheel, you standing up by sitting down to express the way you feel. In front of the stand round midnight time, I'd be feeling the invisible drizzle, us blowing the tones of a restful rhyme and then making them gentlemen sizzle. And you'd be choosing the clearer value of a duck seduction amid the tones near where we'd weathered a flying tantrum by the tempo wandering from home. And we'd be checking out the trap, having wriggled out of class in a room of silently sleeping sheaths full of vibrant glittering brass. And you'd be asking how you figure while we faked the sounds of seagulls, a squawking loudly with such vigor, spirits soaring like the eagles. And I'd be checking out the rhythm of the congan groove you pitching while hearing your sister hammer hickories, getting them ready for the kitchen. And I'd be catching the patchwork play for a greeting I'd solely witness. You're laughing at them dancing eggs with a passionate yen for citrus. 
And you'd be winging that equid sphere that act more like a football by hearing, by hanging eerily in the air, like the echo of a footfall. And now you're jamming on that train, fingers jumping with jive and skill, notes of all them tunes you shared, still be sliding through my skull, to echo there like yours did on stage, knuckles rhapsodizing with speed, though as in rumor you submerge, to the beat of a galloping steed that resonates in my soul, brother. I never had any truer friend. And in the memories of another, you'll triumph in the end. And that's in loving member, memory of Victor White, 1964 to 1982. And then I'd like to share one I just, just coalesced a couple weekends ago, finally, uh, for another friend from middle school who um, just passed away a couple years ago, but still earlier than we expected. And it uh, seems to have worked its way into a form of a sonnet, um, although the leader is not quite the <laughs> traditional leader. It's more dactylic, I think. Uh, this is called Laughter Through the Tears. You taught me to nestle Hangul in their frame, that beautiful script for Korean routine. In spite of the lilt in your quite Irish name, your mother had come from that morning serene. You shared novel sounds that were easing your fears, a band of traditional Japanese strings, the echoes of victory filling my ears infused with such surging metallic wings. My mind wanders through a familiar, wanders through a familiar breeze with tales of rich heroes, both brave and so true. While now a few thousands of Sakura trees are weeping their nebulous petals for you. But memories of how your sharp blaster once swirled still cut through the gloom of this pandemic world. And this is in loving memory of Larry Lafferty, whose name can be translated as Victory Rich Hero. And uh, while I was writing that one, I, echoes of the previous poem came to mind, hence the echo of the word victory in there, uh, since I knew both of them at the same time. This last one I'd like to read, I hope I'm not taking too much time here, but this is, uh, sorry, just need a minute here. It's an analogy for a friend I used to babysit her, as you prefer to call it, boy sit. Uh, and he's, the anniversary, his death was yesterday for seven years. And I finally got around the courage to call his mother and share this with him. With her, sorry, whose mother's one of my biggest mentors in life. This is called The Search for the Inner Warrior's Freedom. I now recall a speeding van I rode in down a country road to sit with you when you were a boy, you handling the shift while your mother drove. I fell asleep that very first time. Your parents had to shake me awake. So would I be allowed to return? They pondered on the path to take. Invited back, I heard your tales of hearing from Billy Joel sounds that suggest that pressure had trains, I'm sorry, pressure had strains of mazurka tunes you learned at a Polish wedding fest. We talk about your project for hours. Ignore the outer descent of the gloom. The sound of gravel underneath tires would send you running up to your room. I later remember talks more serene, reclaiming your life from sour travail, sharing your thoughts on how to proceed, 
hiking in both directions the trail. You'd enter via the Eagle Mount, yearning to walk in the open air, seeking to free the warrior within, meeting an older woman there. You found your way around the world by building landscapes and buying land on verdant slopes of the Fibo state and cooking for friends on New Mexican sand. At last you seem to settle down, your mother ever proud of your life, renting a home in our hometown, but landlord woes would lead to strife. Along with your son who shared his name, you then lived above your father's store where he would sell the finest tones that readers renowned had owned before. You fell into a sleep for a week. A series of shocks had shaken your heart, then opened your eyes one final time before this plane you did depart. I'm sad but glad to drive the miles to witness the piper at the gates and stand in line by the ancient oak that over the centuries silently waits. Our age old meeting, our age old Quaker meeting room, a normally placid sacred place, could not contain the multitudes that spilled into the adjacent space. From bikers with tattoos straight from the hood to mothers of sons who felt understood all gathered there to wish you the best on the following phase of your restless quest. And this is in loving memory of Marcus Macaluso, whose name can be translated as a warrior freed. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. That was Beautiful very tribute. powerful. The love for those departed really shone through. Thank you, Martin. Uh, Thank you. A, a local Always. musician told me, uh, Gene Keller. Always. Yes, uh, Gene Keller told me that there are three deaths, the death of the body, the death of the memory, and then the last time anyone on earth says your name and you are keeping their memory alive and saying their name. And that is quite a service you're doing to them. So thank you very much for sharing them with us. Uh, thank you. It's helped me process and, and keep things going. So, and I do have a couple books that uh, have been published in through the DC Poetry Collective. I can put that information in the chat. And uh, here's the, the latest one actually. It has uh, one of my calligrams on the cover, the words for poetry. And, Excellent. Over over hundred languages <laughs> and a language key on the back. So <laughs> I give the link so you can check it out if you want. All right. Okay. Well, Martin, thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. Thanks and for the time. Of course, every Monday. <laughs> and we go now from the Beltway to the Boogie Down. Uh, because I saw that they were hosting uh, something at one of our big sister mics at the uh, New Yorican. So I don't have to be there to know that that was amazing. And you're going to want to be here to hear them spit. So please welcome to the stage, La Tormenta. What an introduction. Wow. Um, Morning, I'm about to put spotlight on. <laughs> no? Okay, yeah. Every time you do it. I always go back to gallery reviews because I like seeing people's responses when I read. Uh, thank you for hosting. You're doing great as always. Um, I love being around other poets and other hosts because I get to learn so much because um, I'm stepping into my role as a host and it's a lot of fun. So I'll get into my pieces. I'm going to start off with a cover. Uh, the first piece it, uh, was a piece that was written for me uh, by a friend. Um, his name is Nicholas Correa. Some of you may know him. You can find his work uh, at withdrawn.com. And I'll put that in the chat. But this is how I'm going to start off. And then I'll get to some of my stuff. This was written September 30th, 2021. But it's hard when the last time is the last time re-watching pictures and videos of the past like damn. Why the fuck do we 
have to gather here today to separate this woman and man. I now pronounce you the end of God's plan. It was the smile, the laugh that had me sold. Summer just ended and I'm already about to wear a sweater when it's not even cold. Mid-September-ish, I told my therapist, I think I need to temporarily stay away from women. And it's not hard, it just feels like an addiction. At least you feel like one. Normally it's me giving the warning, but look how the roles swapped for us in this story. I wonder if your withdrawals are as heavy as mine. If you replay in your head our final goodbye, I thought it was a joke, so you told me we won't do this anymore. We were one call away from the proud family and sadly, I can't hear these songs the same as before. My bed misses you and you haven't ever touched it. My mind misses you and would like for you to fuck it again. Discussing the different levels of life we get and have yet to comprehend, drooling over the vocalization of your current and future plans. Given the possibility, I may not be able to witness any of them. I'm always want to see you win. I don't care who we're with or where we spend this journey. You, hmm, you are the very definition of poetry. Just please never forget that for me, even if you forget me. End poem. So that was that piece. And these are some things that I wrote. Um, so this is mine. Um, I'll drop my information in the chat too, but you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Medium, Amanda Ashley Villanueva. This piece is called, Tonight I'll Just Mark You Absent. Merciful filled miracles show up at my door in the form of I see you when you can't seem to be seen anywhere else, discarded, hidden high on the crooked shelf of a messy room, smelling the stench of doom, arriving soon, afraid to ask for help, afraid to ask for a pass, to stop being so mean to me, of just wanting you to read to me of just wanting us to write a much sweeter story of just salty ocean eyes squinting to make sure you can see me right. Slow dancing with fright as I call out for your love letters, the ones that sprinkled pizzazz on my past, welcoming me back to this sacred, sacral chakra dance romance comes in the form of a miracle when you thought you didn't deserve one when you thought fun forgot your address, when you wink back at this madness, sinking into your overused mattress, your umbrella for underused lovers, black satin covers cannot hide this black swan lost in her black pride. So tonight I'll just mark you absent. So that's that. Um, next piece is this one's real short. My body be Rikers Island without water, without a life vest, without a boat back home. My body counts the scars, wonders why we had to make shit so hard. My body knows robbing others blind from a life fought for, knows finding its lover inside another bitch. My body gets revenge without seeking it, knows our payback is strictly artistic. Last piece. <laughs> this is called Better Than I Imagined. And this is based on a song um, of the same name. All right. Aggressive misfit, we've been thinking about mad shit. Plastic, tragic, baby, we almost had it. Frantic, vastness, do not want us in the past tense because it was better than I imagined. Lacking practice, tell me we both just acting. Sadness trying to disguise itself as passion. 
still your chip shoulder is what I'm tapping because it was better than I imagined. Nothing worse than the sorry sorrow we've birthed. Trying not to turn this song into a curse because it was better than I imagined. Better than I imagined. Clock hits and I just want to give in, reminiscing on chocolate caramel kisses, forbidding, forbidding any more love lost. It's all my fault. Your voice torments me in my sleep. I'm fiending for your sweets because it was better than I imagined. Better than I imagined. Lustfully, trust me, I wanted you to put no one above me, but that definitely wasn't healthy. We'll never be wealthy if we stay in this daydream. I know nothing is what it seems. I know I said I was done making a scene, but what will it take for you to come back to me? Because it was better than I imagined. Better than I imagined. Thank you, guys. Love you. Love you, kid. Love you, Richie. Love you, Cameron. And love you, everybody. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. It's dope, Amanda. Very dope. Amanda, hermana, te amo mucho. Gracias por sus poemas. That was better than I am at this, to steal a phrase. That was incredible. Thank you so much for being a part of this when you're here. Okay, and coming up next, uh, we have someone who's a very big part of this scene. I almost wish we could have him in the corner the whole time with a little set of pom-poms. He's so enthusiastic. He's so in everyone's corner. It's really something to hear. And I want you to please welcome uh, Mr. Ed Poetastic for me. Because you make me feel fantastic. Give me a P, give me an O, give me an E, give me a T. That's Dale's poet. Woo! Let's what do I tell this. you, folks? <laughs> hey, Kit, you're really, you're really, you're a real hit every time you spit because you keep these rooms lit. And hey, Richie, you're always poetastic, everything in every shape or form. Thank you for breaking us out of this these boring boring norms forevermore. All right, my name is Ed Potato. I feel fantastic. Please give me the time to enjoy my rhyme so you all feel sublime. Okay, here's my potastic chime. I got five jokes and three poems. They all rhyme. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Why didn't the detective come to the crime scene? He was a private investigator. <laughs> What, is, what did the scarecrow said to his neighbor? That's the last straw. <laughs> what did the dog tell his therapist? Life is rough. What did the aunt said to the other aunt? Have you met my aunt? <laughs> and I got one more. What did the bear said to his boss? I can't bear to be here. <laughs> All right, I got this poem. This poem is called The Weatherman. <clears throat> there was a man who cried alone for his glittering passing fancy. His roaming heart turned to stone while he reigns enormous in bluer seas. She was a woman adored by the stars for his heartfelt alluring amazement. His heart being like a sports car, too bad he wasn't worthy entertainment. The skies were vivid in the snowy breeze for a soft scorching passion. His hand suddenly freeze, couldn't give her instant satisfaction. The man got lost in his wonderland while being blinded by the flashing signs. Slowly he used the lure of the quicksand. His celestial fate and destiny was aligned. The man's face used to have been brighter than the sun, yet his beach paled in the full moon. He calls for gray showers as he runs while his weeping heart turns into a swollen balloon. He creates hurricanes while he drinks to forget about his sweet night nightingale. His many griefs where he starts to sink while his hangovers ring louder than any bell. The storms roar about her hugs and kisses, yet the thunder strikes with inner criticism. The luminous embrace he instantly misses as his inner ominous tornadoes destroys him. He creates the milky mist in her image an homage to his woman in white. His sunny emotion quickly diminishes. Now he's the fog in her hungry, alluring sight. All right, that's good. I got one more. 
Here it is. This is called Gray Eyes. Love your color. Please don't hate. Love it as your sister, mother, or brother. Stop the minds debate. We need one another. Some minds need an update before the endless slaughter. On our skin, we can relate. Accept us, just like clear water. It's like the brownies you ate. Please don't turn into a monster that would demolish the state. The America way, you imposter. This way wasn't so great. Please, no more poor corpses on altars. Only you can blind your fate. Don't be a front news for the reporters. Ignorance is, is a state of mind, not a trait. Stop with these pointless inner borders. All that ignorance and hate will stay overweight. Please don't be someone's murderer, but a supporter. Love and acceptance, a more peaceful life awaits. All right, I got one more. Thank you for evermore. All right. Of this encore. Okay, um, this is called Sacred Orphan. They hid me away, feroci ferociously yelling at me. A miracle, I pray. Something to set me free. Why do I stay? I'm a scruffy tree. I see other kids playing. They look so at ease. Envious of their childish days, belittled by my uncle and auntie. On every single day, the chores hurt my hands and knees. My heart corrodes and decays, an antidote for this harsh disease. Praying for a hope or a way, dreams are often a strong breeze. Oh, from what punishment has to say. What's that sound? Birds? No, maybe bees. An owl, alert saying sorry for the delays. My hands quickly squeeze, squeeze, and squeeze. Lines saying Hogwarts, pack your bags, okay. Oh my God, so many hopes, dreams, and guarantees. Grab my wand, cheering hooray. No more hurtful loneliness or crying seas. No more darkened sleep or crazy disarrays. No more cold peas or leftover cheese. Finally, a magical purpose. I don't have to stay. I kept nodding. I agree, agree, and agree. Grab my, sorry, uh, grab my bags. Uh, I'm sorry, grab my baggage. My spectacular adventure starts today. I jerk wired in the grass of our free or flee. So long to obedience or case, melancholy rays and empty meal trays. I couldn't stop saying yes, 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 and please, please, please. My own adventure to a new chapter that's underway. I hope that was okay. And thank you for listening and stay. And I hope you hope all of you have a rich and prosperous and safe day. <laughs> It's prosperous and safe. That's what we all want for each other. Uh, do you have anything coming up you want to plug? No, it's dope. No, it's dope, Mr. Foreman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything I want to um, plug under a rug? Hmm, maybe a little bit snug. Um, well, um, I have nothing planned, but I'm always here to give um, poetic, poetic, potastic words and cheer. So thank you for all for having me here. And remember, P-O-E, that stands for poet. And P-O-E-M stands for poem. Woo! I always mm -hmm. say you and wholesome. <laughs> Whenever you are loathsome. Oh, <laughs> right. That was poem also. Oh, he can't stop <laughs> writing. It's incredible. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Eddie. And we're going to keep moonwalking along the eastern seaboard now because we're going back up to Jersey and we're going to one third of the trilogy to Nick Paleologos. Please, when you're ready. Oh, Nick. Mike. I like how you said my last name. That was really cool. <laughs> Great job, Mr. Monday Night. I'm enjoying this a lot. Killing it right now. I'm learning from you too. <laughs> All right. I got three for y'all. First one, did this at the New Year earlier. Ravenous rebirth, reformation. Dark feathers cascade from cinder and cinnamon on the land. Staken for a crow as the caw comes up the thick neck. Swift is the strike I have matured Merge with this raven. The flight patterns are agile. In V formation, seeking victory. Black is amongst my favorite colors. The raven is symbolized as loss, you know, omen. The people best perceive me as is lost, stuck, sick. 
and just doing this poetry thing. They stood atop of a pedestal, slammed gavels of molten feathers, sentenced me to separate life. What they don't realize is the raven is wise, a foreteller of fortune and future. I was the raven who was singed by words and actions, left out in the open to die. The corpse was thrown into a vat of flames as they watched skin melt, muscles eroded, as members of both family and enemies chant curses eyes within spoken verses. What they fail to realize is the raven became a phoenix. I fly away. I let these feathers burn, burn it all down. I let my feathers of a ravenous phoenix scorch tongues with my existence. I was the raven. I became the phoenix. I am a living spirit animal. I am reborn. I'm going to do a second one that's kind of more also on the relation of animals. It's my favorite animal, actually, is the fox. This one's called Foxhole. I am like a fox. I laugh with maniacal madness. I act like a cat with dogware within this membrane hardware, hardwired to self-induced dominant and passive traits that display under moonlight because foxes function best like me. I show my colors, red for passion, silver for calming, gray for wisdom, black for elegance. A pack of foxes is called a skulk, skulking like shadows realm, like sinister serpents, helix, an elixir of cosmic angelic blood. Now that's a cab I'll ride any day of the week. That I will disappear to the shadows, not to be sinister, but to be by myself with thoughts pitched to black, fast as the foreseen fastball. My pitcher mound is all the way in New York, and I'm pitching to the city of angels, only the devils intercept it and hit it back out of the cathedral to cataclysm. Fox is both predator and prey. Foxes can overcome the rabbits with that and without lagging, lag or morphing the mission to get the kill. Foxes have issues with coyotes as they get kill them for not for trophies. It is because of the food chain. People hunt foxes because of fur or because they're pests. You can kill a fox, another will take its territory. Foxes are independent, live in a fox saw, body coiled to that of the Firefox logo. In case a quarter of the tail, the body takes another quarter and the other half is to let the people breathe. I live in a fox hole. Only it might seem. It's home to me. Me is the only one I answer to. Alright, so that was foxes right there. Um and the last one that I want to do, um, I'm going to do a shorty to keep things uh, in line because it's kind of late over here. This one is called If Only Books Could Talk. What would your book say? Whimsical nightmares, vampires that eat garlic, werewolves that are not afraid of silver. What would your book say? Ostracized, outdated laws, astounded feats to be broken, allocated personal reports? What would your book say? A fictional story worth a thousand words, a real life rags to riches ordeal, an autobiographical triumph. Tattooed into pages, is it taboo blasphemy that is actually fact? Is it a beautiful lie that nukes duality? Your words mean stunt, surrealism, or no none. What will your book say? I hope it is a relatable story. Done. Yeah, man. Awesome. Hey. Host gang, host gang, stand up. <laughs> one of us, one of us, one of us, one of us. It's like I screwed up. I have to come back here now on Monday night. <laughs> that was dope stuff, Nick. Yes, absolutely. Greatest. Yeah, man. Uh, where can the people find you if this is their first time seeing you? Um, you could find me on IG at the real Nick P. 
That's C-H-E-R-A-L-N-I-C-K-P. I have an open mic coming up this Wednesday, 9.15 EST. The word is right. It's going to be awesome. Um, um, I also have a book coming out soon called Ad vs. Reaction. That'll be available in the winter. Well, that's going to be pretty lit. And um, Ooh, the, next a, ten, the next 10 in the Next 10 in the house. Hell yeah, next 10 in the house doing shit. And also for everyone here in the El Paso area and also online, I'm coming back. To take over El Paso Biwams in November. So mark your calendars. I believe it's the 29th, Richie. Richie, correct me if I'm wrong, it's the 29th, I believe, we agreed upon. Is that right? All right. I believe so, man. Hell uh, yeah. So there you go. Something to look forward to on the schedule right there. Mark that Thank in you. your calendar. You should already have every Monday marked, but mark that one twice. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kit. You're awesome. You're doing a great job as a host. I'm loving every minute of it. I couldn't miss this before. So I had to come here, man. Thank you so much for everything you and Richie and everyone does here. Well, thank you, Nick. Uh, we're going to just be in an endless cycle of thank yous. And it would be all, all of them would be deserved, but we must keep going. We must stay in New Jersey for just a little bit longer because Miss Teresa Rose. It's going to step to the mic. Let's hear what she has to say. Hello. Um, I'm working on this piece. It's not mine. It's just helping me get a flow because I, I, I get like really afraid, like when I'm about to read and then I get nervous and it doesn't sound right. So I've been working on this one piece. It's not mine. It's from, from the Fringe Festival in Philadelphia, but it's an intense piece. So it's helping me get into it a little bit. So bear with me. <laughs> okay. For the first question is, are you content? And there's a box. It's it says yes, and then and the next box doesn't say anything except for this. You would have done that. That's what you always do. We've been here before with you over and over and over again, and you never give us anything fucking else but exactly what we're expecting. And please just leave me alone. Let me be here without having to contend with your impressions of me. But how can you be? You think you can just be here without contending like that? As if it's possible not to contend with us? Not to contend with expectation? As if the, the world was built for you to do as you like? No, that's not what I was saying. Well, then what were you saying? It's not as if you know what you're saying. You know you just admitted to that. And I can't trust anything you say or anything you said. I said all I hear is dull ringing from downstairs. But we're not even home right now. Sorry, I got to turn the page. And you're going off again. Bring it back. Bring it back. No, I have to pursue whatever it was where I thought I was. I'm reaching something. And if you could just hold your voice for a moment, I could hear it. I can't hear it. I can't hear it. I just want to fucking hear it. What do you want to hear? I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just want to hear or just want to not hear you for a moment. I said, please, can you just shut up? Please, fucking please, calm down, okay? You're scaring me. Please, take a deep breath. Stop telling me how to breathe. I can breathe on my own. I can. I've been doing it my whole life, but not deeply enough. You're not breathing right. I can hear it. I can hear you breathing. It would be nice if you could just listen and not talk. If you could just go somewhere else for a little bit and come back. So I can't think about everything. I've been, sorry. So I can think about everything I've been wanting to think about and not think about how much time do you need? I don't know. So I'm supposed to just leave and not know when I'm coming back? Yes, please. Well, I can't. I can't just leave like that 
I can't leave you here like that alone. No, you're just going to have to find a way to listen to me. Fuck, you forgot to turn the burner off. <laughs> Sorry. I need to I need to work through this poem. <laughs> I feel like when I finally feel like I have this poem right, then I can stop reading it. <laughs> I'm sorry if you guys have heard me read this a bunch of times already. That was that was <laughs> it's, fun. It's that, me. That I'm trying a... to I'm just trying to get like some kind of flow because I really feel like I don't have I don't have a comfortable flow right now. I'm just like a bunch of nerves all balled up. Like I can't relax. <laughs> So I'm sorry if, if, if you're bearing with me on this. No, no apologies necessary. I enjoyed that. And from what you're telling me, it's going to be better every time. So that's something to look forward to. Um, you mentioned that was the cover. Do you have like a name or a title that we can look up on our own? Um, I will put it in the chat. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, and do you have anything of your own to plug right now? Or, or, or are you... Do you have one of your own you want to read right now? Or? Um, hang on. I have to disappear off the screen for that. Okay. <laughs> I wrote, I write to prompts all the time because that also helps me like just keep loose. And um, there's this one called um, The Rhythm of the Rain. And it was a 30 word um, challenge. So I wrote that um, earlier today, but I had a really hard time with the internet going down and everything to get it in there, but I finally got it in there because it was in my mind and I, I have OCD and if I don't get it in there, I'll go crazy. So, okay. The rhythm of the rain, washing away haze, leaving me cascading in a pumpkin spice latte days, driving me insane, longing for summer's lazy rays, soothing the autumn beach waves. <laughs> all right thank you so much terry you're and, welcome uh, <laughs> and uh once again any social media accounts you want to direct people towards i okay. i funny's mom at instagram and um terry rose jerson on facebook all right thank you so much for being in our space and uh coming up next to our space is uh, a man with a very, with a very specific way of seeing the world and he makes us all see it too. Uh, he comes from the land of Cleves and he is here to share with us one of his urban legends. Please welcome uh, Mr. Greg Michaels, the urban cowboy poet. I just got back on, I didn't know I was on. And I didn't really sign up either. <laughs> well, we, and I don't have a new, I don't have a new legend, so I'll take a request. If, what legend do you want? Somebody have a request? I want the dinosaur one, the Jurassic. No, I don't dinosaur? do that one. John Hammond does that one. He's not Where's here. John? Uh, he's not here. He's not here. Uh, okay, um, sorry. Uh, can you do a song? Your, your, oh, your, 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 your baby, the baby song. How about the, the engagement that... ring? What? The engagement hey. ring. I didn't hear that one. One more time. The engagement ring. The engagement, the engagement ring. ring. Oh, 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 my gosh. Yeah. And then can I have a second one? Uh, you know, you sang about uh, your your new uh, the new child in your life. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Just a minute. Let me. Oh, sure! I remember that one. Be happy. If, if I could throw in a vo if I could throw in my hat into the ring, uh, I want the one about Mikey from the Life commercials eating pop rocks. <laughs> that's a good one. I know that one. If that's that's gonna make it long to do all of those. I don't know all those. Okay. Well, we'll pick and choose. Sift it out. We'll sort it. We'll Wait, let's it do Mike. Do Mikey. Do Mikey and yeah. the engagement ring. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, I'll do Mikey. Do Mikey and the baby. A serial company put three brothers on the TV screen and launched a tragic chain of events no one could have foreseen. All started with a commercial. You drive. 
I don't want to try it. Let's get Mikey. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. That's how John and Jeremy happened to discover they could test all kinds of scary foods on their little brother. They devised a wicked plan, these mischievous little elves. They'd try on Mikey all the stuff grown-ups keep for themselves. Most things Mikey didn't like. Cereal might be a fluke. Couldn't stand the taste of beer. Daddy's cigar made him puke. They fed him caviar, coffee, foie gras, rum, and stinky cheese. Only mom's imported chocolate truffles seemed to please. Well, Sweet Tooth was Mikey's thing. He rejected a dill pickle, but he enjoyed sweet sparkling wine the way his bubbles tickled. For the boys' reviser test, they did get him to drink or eat brandy, fruit, or creme de menthe, anything that's sweet. They hooked him on sweet cereal, but for them, that weren't enough. One day, they introduced him to the harder stuff, rock hard candy, carbonated kind, the stuff that blows your stomach instead of your mouth. He popped those pop rocks in his mouth and they popped him back. Pretty soon his entire head had sustained a fizz attack. Mikey loved this new sensation. He was overcome with joy. His bros had found the perfect drug to hook this little boy. They heard a rumor about pop rocks when they had to try. Just like little Mikey, they were on a sugar high. Mikey, you know that you could trust us because we're older. Pop rocks get a lot more fun when you drink a can of soda. The more you eat, the more fun you'll have, they told their little brother. He had half a dozen bags of one, drank a six pack of the other. He hiccuped past his eyeballs, and he was bouncing around the room. He rumbled like a volcano. Then his tummy went kaboom. Their prank, much to their horror, had done a bang up job. It used to be Mikey was now a pink and cola colored blob. John and Jeremy started to cry. They were in a lot of trouble. They had caused poor little Mikey to overdose on bubbles. They missed their little brother, but what were they to do? They couldn't tell their parents he'd OD'd on CO2. They improvised the story, the first one that was handy. Mikey got in a car with a man who gave him candy. Boys must live their whole lives with the consequence of their schemes. Each night, a bubbling, fizzing little Mikey haunts their dreams. Pop, pop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a nightmare it is. Old family rules the day when they thought they tried to show biz. Thank you. That's it. I like that one, too. <laughs> okay, I'm glad we could come to a place of agreement, Mr. Early lot. Cowboy Poet. There's a lot for Kemlin to type there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, for the people You're seeing you. Baby. You can find lots of legends on and videos on Urban Cowboy Poetry on YouTube and on Facebook. Oh, right. The videos mostly. <laughs> he is a fixture here. He is in okay. a lane of one. <laughs> We're a, we're a fan, the Urban Cowboy film. I'm the Urban Cowboy film. There is no other. There's one. Always no unforgettable. Yes. There can, oh, there can be only one. Unforgettable. That's what you are. <laughs> unforgettable. Okay, I, I since I'm losing control of this, so I'm going to put myself on spotlight real quick. Eyes on me. Uh, <laughs> uh, but because we do have to keep going and, on, on. The and words, we're going to actually the words are forgettable so i don't know the rest of <laughs> oh man he's one of a kind what can i say our next uh performer is also one of a kind and performs just nothing but acts of kindness every every time i see her and uh, she is coming up next from Phoenix, Arizona. Please welcome Kemlin to the stage. Thank you, Kit. And you are doing such a fine job as our host for tonight. Love it, love it, love it. And I'm going to uh, do like a VWAMS thing. Uh, please subscribe to the Poetry Global. Ah, lost. 
I always have to take off my virtual background or else nothing is shown. Dang it. Sorry about that. Okay, so please subscribe to the uh, YouTube, uh, the Poetry Global Network, uh, PGN. Uh, we have uh, my web show with Marissa Prada, Lawe Bulatao, and Mark Fishbein. Uh, we need a thousand uh, subscribers. We're still short quite a few, so please click on it. I've got two features coming up, one in our night with Doc Jenning on October 17th. And then uh, with Dane Inns, time to arrive on October 26th. So come catch my show. I promise I will bring the Blue Mermaid. She's always a crowd pleaser. So that's what I'm bringing. But today, oh man, nobody's brought any uh, too much uh, poetry, uh, sensual poetry. Well, Doc Jenning always has love poems, but I'm going to share a little bit. Uh, may I share a screen, please? Yep, I got it. Let's see. Hopefully it's up in the right spot. Uh, no, I'm not my link tree, darn it. There we go. All right. So I am sharing with you, uh, I've been working on a project, uh, a central poetry project with a, a friend of mine, an anonymous poet from Singapore. And so I'm going to do a cover. So this is a cover of his po uh, piece. And then I'm going to do a response poem. This is called Blockbuster. It was for a cover of darkness to lock our lips a second time, to ascertain how real the first one was, and if we want it again. We missed half the plot with eyes closed during deep kisses that outlasted entire scenes in growing intensity, hearing your breaths over dialogue, my heart beats over sound effects, realizing neither of us wanted to pull away from each other until we ran out of air. I wrapped my arm around your waist, but you slowly shifted it under your breasts. My hand glided up to fondle one, and only time I stopped myself right there, you curled up at the end credits, comfortably fitted the curve of my torso while I engulfed you in my arms, entwined. We went through the same cycle the next movie we watched, only that you wore a top that allowed easier access, and later, Move my hand to in the thigh with a hint of anticipatory tremor. My fingers strolled inward and were trapped with your tight safety shorts. You darted away from me to the restroom. I feared having offended you with my brazenness, but you returned, very removed. I caressed your slick wetness till you trembled more than once, refusing confession. You, you found your hand stroking what had hardened. The cinema fast became a hiding place for secret pleasure. You wondered if I mind wasting money on tickets, but you are the only blockbuster I desire to come to be coming soon. <laughs> All right, now it's my response poem. It's called Bust of a Marble Block. You caress my face into my cruel eyes, over my turned up nose, tracing my lips, hands, feathering neck down my throat, pressing shoulders past my arms, moving in to cup my marble breasts, carefully teasing chiseled tips of my nipples, erect eternally, displaying my redness for your touch. All right, I would like to close my set with uh, a project that I have done for um, Singapore uh, Translation Month. So I translated a song for you. And I would like to invite you, it's, it's actually an old classic Chinese song it, uh, in the tradition. It's a pop songs that were very sentimental in Singapore are called trot. So they're called trot songs. And uh, it's got a, a lovely a melody that touches my heart and my parents' generation. You're not going to be able, unless you speak Mandarin, you're not going to be able to understand what I'm, I'm saying at first before the translation. But what I would like you to, I hope that the melody can be a form of meditation for you. Uh, and I hope that you'd be soothed. 
。你问我爱你有多深，我爱你有几分？我的情越真，我的爱越真。月亮代表我的心，你问我爱你有多深，我爱你有几分？我的情不移，我的爱不变，月亮代表我的情。轻轻的一个吻，已经打动我的心。深深的一段情，叫我思念到如今。你问我爱你有多深，我爱你。去想一想，你去看一看，月亮代表我的心。You asked how much do I love you? My love, it spans all time. My love is real. My love is true. The moon reflects my heart. You asked how much do I love you? My love, it spans all time. They are constant like the waves of the sea. The moon reflects my heart. Gently kiss these lips of mine. Can you hear my beating heart? My blood courses deep through my veins. Our lips shall never part. You asked how much. Do I love you? My love, it spans all time. Search your mind, open your eyes. The moon reflects my heart. As you heard that song, my meditation for each one of you is that that love. That we crave for can truly only be satisfied by ourselves. All others, I've learned, accessorizes our journey. But we must be the ones to kiss ourselves gently and with honesty. Thank you. That was beautiful, Camila. That's beautiful. That was so good. Oh man. That song. So, I love that. Gently and honestly, I like that. I like that as, as a means to a better life. Uh, if people are seeing you for the first time, where else on the internet can they find you? I'm primarily a Facebook uh, 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 artist, which is hilarious today because Facebook just totally flipped out. So I I was eradicated today. So you can find me at <laughs> Kemlin Todd Pappy at Facebook. But I also have I,、uh, IG, Instagram, and I'm starting to do more with Marissa Prada on、uh, Instagram, and it's kind of fun. But you know, I, I'm an older poet, so it's it's always like, oh, new technology. That's kind of you know fear and trepidation. But I'm so excited because Urban Cowboy Poet and I and Marissa, Marissa Prada, we're going to be coming to. El Paso on October twenty second, so I'm going to be able to hang out with my peewoms peeps, and I cannot wait to see you in person.、Uh, please, on the lookout for our,、uh, you know, a, 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 a publicity. We'll probably do some pop up events, but we're also going to be hanging out with Richie, who's going to be like creating stuff for us to do. We're going to、okay. be there uh, with uh, Stacy Dyson and Sandy Jakes. All right. Cool. All right, Kim. 
That was awesome. And I'm looking forward to that as well. Meet all of you people in meat space for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe Urban Cowboy Boat. Are you, you said you were going too, right? Yeah, I am. All right. There we go. Now it's a party. Uh, but, but we must turn from the near future back to the present, back to what's in front of us. And in front of us is uh, someone we missed all summer when he was gone. Uh, but he's come back to the fold now, and uh, he, and uh, out of Long Beach, uh, yes, Long, out of Long Beach, please welcome Abraham Kimon to the stage. Abraham. Hey, hey. Woo! Yes, I feel blessed to be here tonight in the presence of all of you righteous poets here, so... I'm going to share about 15 haikus in an erotic piece. It's a new one. I think some of you might have heard it on Saturday if you attended Marissa's pop up open mic. And for those who haven't heard it, you're here for the first time. Oh, Paul was here. <laughs> All right. Erotic ports, literary sex workers, turning tricks with treats, poetic strippers giving sensual dances on the laps of books, with pen and paper, writing orgasms in French, noir menage et toi. You are the hostess, serving me glazed cinnabons, tongue dives in your hole, eight ball and cue stick, aiming blackness at your hole, calling my cum shot. And more haikus here. Long distance marriage removed me from our bedroom, born again virgin, forced me to practice an abstinent religion, flesh slowly dying, suffering from thoughts of sexual rendezvous I cannot relive, except on paper where the pen ejaculates black ink from my heart, hoping these scriptures will reach your Holy Spirit living in Kenya, impregnating you with lovely words from my mouth, birthing poetry. Promise we will raise our literary children, continents apart. Nurture our babies with some healthy food for thought. May their bones grow strong. Provide it with love from the city of angels to the motherland, reviving my soul to keep me alive and well for the sake of you. And I'm gonna finish it off with this new erotica piece I just finished writing on Saturday. It's called A Taste of You, A Taste of Me. What would I not do just to get a taste of you when my penis is rapidly arousing, gut is loudly growling, Mouth is watery with saliva to eat your chocolate vagina. Hungry, grouchy, been waiting so long to take off your sweet edible thong. Stuff my face in your scrumptious food. Put me in such a good fucking mood. Pressing my lips on your delicious clit with both my hands gripping your honey melon tits. Begging you to give me seconds and thirds. My taste buds are at a total loss of words, reduced to moaning ecstatic sounds of pleasure as you fiercely squirt at great length beyond measure with a smile on your face to satisfy my old flesh, if only for the moment until I completely digest your orgasmic delicacies, calories I burn quick, then you feed me more pussy, keep erecting my dick, growing stronger and stronger, getting ready to fuck. But first you get down on your knees to suck, marinate my raw meat with your slippery seasoned tongue, flavored with the breath of fresh air from your lungs. Turn the knob on your oven to the highest temperature. Do not bother setting the time. You can rest assured my king-sized drumstick knows when it's time to come out. Please you with a taste of me in your mouth. Swallow without choking while you lick my bone clean. Deep throat your fingers to wipe off the cream. Left over after you finish devouring my masculine meal. 
Make me want you forever. I will gladly kneel. Propose to your divine feminine fruit to be my spouse. Tied a knot with a savory kiss at Ebony's penthouse. No need to be dressed in a tuxedo and wedding gown. We can do this butt naked if you are really down. All it would take for you is to say hell yes so we can continue having this awesome food sex inside the kitchen on the counter to be exact where our vows to exchange sensual meals remain intact. End of the piece. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I hope who you wanted to hear that heard it. <laughs> Ew, that was wild. I love it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, so for the people who are seeing you for the first time, Abraham, where can they find you? Uh, Y'all can find me on Instagram and on Clubhouse at The Righteous Poet. That's spelled W-R-I-T-E-O-U-S. Excellent. I love a good pun. Thank you very much for joining us, Abraham. Oh, right. And, yes. And we're bringing it back to the home base. And I am so glad you all get to see this writer because I've said this before. I don't know if you believe me or not. We don't have, we don't do favoritism here, but we do have some favorites. And when I saw her read live last week and Richie played uh, Hypnotized by Biggie Smalls to walk her up to the mic, I was like, this is a great moment. I would like to live in this moment for at least a couple of weeks. Uh, so I, I can't do that music thing, Richie can. I don't have that kind of setup, but I would like you to please welcome Patty to the stage. Hi. Well, I can't speak after that introduction. Thanks, Kit. <laughs> okay, hear me? Okay, I have two pieces. I have one awkward piece and then semi-depressing, not as bad piece. First piece, I would say I have this power, this incredible ability to feel completely alone when the bodies of a thousand are surrounding me whole. Is the temptation a rotting of a crippling soul who cherishes death in a life much unknown? To tell you the truth will be speaking in lies and to make sense of this line will be trickery's gold. I slid on the side of mountains with pebbles, cause the membranes in my mind to rupture from swelling I stood on my head for far too long, known blue as my shadow and collapsing as joy. I came here to tell you the truth in my words and yet the figures of hiding has followed me here. I punctured my wounds for they healed quite swiftly, covered the flaws with mixed match foundations. And the will of my power seems effortlessly useless because many more appear and the loneliness grows ruthless. First piece. Okay, second piece. I need you, but I don't want you. I crave the presence of your scent within the inches of my skin, but I don't miss you. I don't want to want you, but I love you. What I really need is to be without you, but to have you. The visions in my eyes replays of hidden scenes where music floats beneath the bottoms of our toes, where ruffle sheets are timeless and halfway through sip glasses are endless. I try not loving you, but needing you. I try not thinking of you, but my heart still pleaded for you. I drowned within the words of your lips and only caught a breath when your arms carried mine. But I loved you more and found myself needing you less. For loving you was being unable to float with empty shoes. Loving you was frameless hung pictures and soft cushions but cold sheets. Loving you was loving me less. Loving you was not loving you at all. For I needed you but never had you. Desired the idea of you but never held it. Loving you was losing me. Was dropped sand in an hourglass. Was wondering mapless was anything but me. Yet here I sit, not wanting you, but craving you. All right, then. With the sign off, she has perfected over the years. Oh, man. That was awesome. That was nice. Okay. Where, where can folks find you if this is their first time experiencing Oh, yeah, it's too cold. Um, Patty's underscore poetic underscore life. And we out. Snap, thumb, we're out. It's a science. Oh, thank you so much, Patty, for joining us and sharing. Uh, and uh, now we're headed back to the West Coast. Uh, we're going to a 
No, we are not because I don't see them in here. Oh, wait, there they are. There they are. There he is. I'm sorry. Okay. Sneaking up on me from behind. <laughs> Which is uh, something that you never want a teacher to do. But here he comes. Mr. Tezuzomo. Class is in session. All righty. You can catch me on Instagram under gashes2019. And if uh, the magic Facebook is back on under pandemic poets there and if you want to support my work please purchase my book gashes from amazon that
Woo! Yes! That was lit. Alright, I'm gonna switch to my next song. Alright, let's see if we can pull this off. Darkness every day 
End song. <laughs> God, nice, man. That's a cool take on it. I really like what you did with it. Wow. I hope you guys like that. I can listen to you play all the time. Just keep playing Tez on replay over and over again. Yes. That's one of my favorites by Bill Withers. You bet. You know some song. You so the first song coming. was obviously uh, Bob Dylan. Dylan. And then the second song was Bill Withers' Ain't No Sunshine. Yes. I love the story why he put the I knows. I know, I know, I know, I know. He was trying to save space on the tape for another verse you wanted to write yet, but everybody said just leave it in that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a classic. That happens sometimes with creation. Yeah, exactly. Put it in. Oh, All right, man. thank you. Thank you, Ted. That was wonderful. Oh, man. And we're going to go next. Uh, overseas we're gonna go it's late at night here but it's about the afternoon where he is uh we're so glad he joined us uh he is julian matthews please take it away hi happy to be here thank you it's called suits i own three suits tailored two-piece single-breasted. The first was from my wedding and still has my name embroidered in gold on the inside. The second was for work, meetings, formal dinners. When you wear black, no one can tell it's the same one. The third was made hastily in Vietnam on holiday at one of those quick turnaround shops that you recommended. It's cheap, you insisted. And I even considered a Mandarin collar, the kind you wore but opted for the standard notch label, label. On returning that suit never fit properly. And I was always put off, I always put off having it altered. It still hangs in the wardrobe unused. Over time, the two earlier suits had to have their waistline expanded dry clean several times, sometimes from puke stains. And eventually the first one, woolen and heavy, rarely came out. It was too hot and uncomfortable to wear even in air-conditioned ballrooms. The second became my mainstay, although the business reasons have since faded in the pandemic. No one wears a suit to a Zoom funeral. The third still remains unworn with no occasion to grace. And I remember now how you patiently awaited in downtown Ho Chi Minh. Illegally parked three times, once for the measurement, the second time for the fitting and alterations, and the third to pick it up in the city you adopted as your own. And I'm reminded how our exchanges, once filled with fire and wonder, humor and joy, are today only about your recovery and the daylight that now fades between us, knowing that the reckoning draws near, and the decision on which suit to wear on that last occasion will no longer be in our hands. Thank you. Wow, that was... Oh. Wrestling kind of caught me off guard. That was very good. Thank you so much, Julian. Uh, if people are seeing you for the first time, where else on the internet can they find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, Linktree slash Julian Matthews with a double T. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Julian, for joining us. And coming up next, I was a little sad when I saw the initial list because I saw, well, I see Terry and I see Nick, but that's only two thirds of a trilogy. But then at the 11th hour, rolling clap of thunder was heard and the storm dot God came in to complete the trilogy and the prophecy. So 
please join me in welcoming to the stage, Paul Kamkasen. Prophecy is about to be fulfilled right here. I'm all for it. Jersey. Jersey Trinity. The Jersey Trinity in the house. Um, storm gods. Not quite in the building, but the storm force is in the building. So that counts. Um, I hope Zoom like holds up here because my Zoom's been bugging um, all day and night. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's Maybe it's something in the air uh, that's been causing the interwebs to collapse. But I, I ain't mad at it. I've been enjoying reality. I got back to teaching all my classes in person. And that's been like really fucking awesome and rewarding. And it's felt super good to like unplug a bit and not be so reliant on Zoom. So really thankful and grateful for that. Um, before I get into my set, I wanted to plug uh, an event I'm doing this Thursday at Inspired Word NYC. If you follow them on IG, I'm going to be at um, the Parkside Lounge in New York off, off of Houston, Lower East Side, doing an in-person uh, feature called uh, New York City Voices, and I'm the special guest from Jersey. I'm the only person outside of the boroughs invited to read at this. Nick P is going to be there um, on the open mic, shutting shit down, holding it down. Um, so I'm really excited to, to be doing in-person features and whatnot too. Um, so before I, I, I read a couple of really, yeah, Jersey, Jersey in the house. And somebody at, at the New York today from Norca, a, a new a new phenomenal poet came through and she she like killed it. So I'm just I'm always happy to see Jersey doing things. But yeah, um, before I begin my set, can I just ask everybody to close their eyes for a brief two or three seconds and just have a moment of gratitude. Think of something that they're grateful for and then silently put that out into the universe. <sighs> okay. So I'm going to read one really short piece that's from my book which I've stopped promoting because it's like a year and a half old now. So it's like old news to me. Um, but if you've never bought my book or known that that existed, you can follow me on IG at Pocum Queso and then jump down a link tree to find this. Uh, this piece is called B. And it's about bulimia. It's like that guy you went to college with and partied with and wondered why he'd always get so excited for girls from the sorority to come over and sip wine coolers until you saw him slip a rufalin into a white claw. And you wondered what if all the drinks were spiked with Rufio so he could bang orang any piece of Tinkerbell he saw suitable. And then you got woozy while looking through the looking glass of Ruby slipping Rubik's cube, spitting solo cups, out it comes. And next thing you know, you're waking up Sore and doubled over, caked in fairy dust, ready to forget and ready to be subjected to this all over again. All right. Uh, and I'm going to read one more piece. This is a piece that I wrote um, to perform at the Nuyo. But like, you know, Nuyo has like new rules and shit on Mondays. So I had to edit the piece down. So I didn't do my full Paul Kong karaoke thing. Um, so I'm going to read the, the BET uncut version <laughs> of, of my poem. Also, I don't know, like, like, I don't know if everybody grew up watching like BET Uncut, like at two in the morning um, or watching like in the basement with Big Take Up. But anyway, I, I grew up on 106 and Park and Freestyle Fridays. So whatever. Um, this piece is called My Spirit Animal is an Animorph. See, my spirit is an anthropomorphic karma whore. It mines Bitcoin and reaps commas, goes harder than tequila shots. So let's call it mezcal as its death call to mate rings out louder than bells, yet still chameleonic, shifting, amorphous, but not platonic, cognizant in the animal kingdom. Everything that and everything and everyone that wishes to survive must fuck. Thus, you and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals, so let's do it like they do on the Discovery Channel. Get yeah, noni now. Dismantling natural selection. Oh, am I rambling? Sorry then. Here we are again. I feel the chemicals kicking in. It's getting heavy and I want to run and hide. I want to run and hide. I do it every time. You're killing me now. And I won't be denied by you, the animal inside of you. 
Oh oh, I want some more. Oh oh, what are you waiting for? Say goodbye to my heart tonight. Cannibal Queen, I feel you feeling your way through me. Claws, bone saw through chest cavity scaffolding. Makes Rio Grande a vena cava calamity. I mean, how many ventricles does it take to make river flow? Really though, who are we in stream of godlessness? How many bodies do we become when we fuse? Is it me? Is this you? Is we two times the multiplicity of goose pimples meet Spider-Man meme while climbing walls vine from inside Miles Morales in and out like animal style, but this entire multifarious multiverse of beast warring prehistoric zordonic powers ranging when they shift with morphine calls like orgiastic orgasms and morphin time shouting out to become tyrannosaur ass horny as triceratops ramming like mastodon pterodactyl saber tooth and it's the eye of the tiger thrill of this fight from ambrosia anosognosia of a doja cat asking to kiss it more because that kitty like it raw as doggy style archaeology buried that bone deep down be i'm praying on you tonight hunt you down eat you alive just like animals animals like animals most Huntress, please feast on me, man eater gliding on butter wings, flatsome and jetsome of butterfly jellyfish bells which sting like a bee leg caught in teeth of honey bear trap. Oh, you so oh so lobo, roaming solo while hungry like the wolf, Lucy and a pack of one ravenous hyena preening in the jungle, tending to pride like lioness flocking after. Stampeding wildebeest rage through the gorge to murder your Mufasa and nah, I ain't lying king, that's just the circle of life, all things die eventually, cause in the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight, I was told cheaters never prosper yet, oh, 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 set the cheetahs on the loose, I, 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 there's a thief out on the move, I, uh, 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 underneath our legion's view. They have taken Cleopatra, run, run, Cleopatra. No more serpents in her room. Samson slithered and hid in trees of knowledge. Kingdoms met doom when kings of Leonic facade robbed queen's tomb. So no longer will I walk under forever. This black panther panting knows a leopard cannot change its spotted lantern fly, die back in vines and trees, poisoning all it murder hornets like me, Chicago bulldozing everything I touch in this china shop, gore like a rhino's tusk, coming at you like a dark horse across the savannah. Fuck what you heard of elephants, never forget. My dick has a trunk of memory, elephant teen tunneling through velvet underground, jungle sound of gorillas, feel good ink. I'm useless, but not for long. My future is six foot, seven foot, eight foot, nine, coming on and he want banana. But I want the mana of that satisfied mating dragonfly. And I know why that cage bird sings. Why it stays despite its nightingale pleas dying to aviate. See, hope can bring ample worms like moths to light fluttering and gut. Touch if you will my stomach. Feel how it trembles inside. You got the butterflies all tied up. Don't make me chase you. Even doves have pride. How could you just leave me standing? Alone in a world that's so cold. Maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm just like my father, too bold. Maybe you're just like my mother. She's never satisfied. Why do we scream at each other? This is what it sounds like when doves cry. Thus, I don't ask why. I just let the shift of these tears in jeans perpetually change me, a changeling, because staying the same sounds a whole lot like the definition of insane. Thank you. For God, God damn it. That was genius. God damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Woo! Hi. Yes. Goodness, that, that was, was nimble. Thank you. That was BET on cut. <laughs> that was like you were playing hopscotch with the grid that went to 100. Just one, two, one, two, one, two. Yes. Incredible. 
<laughs> Thank you for the space and the stage and letting me spit my shit. I love y'all. Um, I can't wait to come out to Texas someday. Like, yeah. I know I need to come out there one of these days too. <laughs> Yo, same, same, man, same. Yeah, part of my family came from Texas to California. So, shit. <laughs> Road trip. Hell yes. Oh, we got to get some money from the tourist board. We got to ask someone about that. <laughs> We're driving up the numbers by a lot, I feel like. Uh, but we are coming regretfully to the end of another absolutely goddamn perfect Monday night. And there's only one way to end Monday nights. Right? And the man. Yeah, thank you. Right. You know him, you love him. If you don't love him, we got problems. Dan, please take the mic when you're ready. How's everybody doing tonight? Like, thank you. Um, okay. Has anybody visited? No. Okay. Well, since yeah, we're in the middle, yeah, we're in the tenth month of the 2021, and we're about less than two months away to the new year. And the cold, man, looks like summer. Looks like the summer's already been died down. As I talk, listen, uh, Purple Heaven by Rod Stewart. The Purple Heaven, the go, last go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um. Yeah. Oh, speaking of October, yep. What what's going on in October? Yep. Uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month and um, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Yeah, that's right. And at the end of the at the end of the at the end of uh, at the end of this month. Yep. They go to H A double L O W W E N spell. You anybody remember that? Anybody know that quote? Anyway, yeah, I I learned about that when I was a kid. You know, when uh, when I first heard about that, and uh, yeah, when uh, this teacher sang the song, you go H A double L O W W E N spell. <laughs> Raja Sendor, the hell is this guy? Uh, who, who is he? Raja Sendor? Hmm. Yeah, I never heard of him. So. All right. And, yep, we're, yep, we're about, um, oh, nice. He's a poet. Oh, I see. Okay, we're about, uh, since, uh, I don't know, it could be, I think 27 days till Halloween from today. That's what I know of. And speaking of uh, October, we have yet another. Oh, I think. I, oh, I think I didn't remember that. Okay. All right. Here's uh, a, a child's calendar by John Updike. The month is October. <clears throat> October. The month is amber, gold, and brown, blue ghosts of smoke float, float through the town. Great V of geese, I'm sorry, great V's of geese honk overhead and maples turn a fiery red. Sorry. And uh, Frost bites the lawn. The stars are slit in a black cat's eye before she spits. At last, small witches, goblins, hags, pirates, armed with paper bags. <laughs> Their costumes hinged on a safety pin. Go haunt a night. Of course, pumpkins. Grin. Yep. And that is this is the child's calendar by John F. Jack, month of October. Click. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, well, all right. And that comes to the end of the night. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Elias Barza. My friend Al. Happy birthday, Al. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Um, There it is. Okay, here it is. Read it and weep it. I right, follow my page on. Um, I'm a bit behind schedule yet again. I apologize. Uh, find me on Twitter and Instagram. Find my Facebook, and you know what to do. My hashtag. Find Animans Weekly on YouTube. All right, don't miss it. All right, All right thanks a lot. I'll see you guys next Monday. All right, kid, back to you and tell Richard it's close at night. Oh. All right, then. I will. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for, uh, for all of that. Um, okay, so had a great night here. I just want to get in my plugs very quickly. So I want you to check out my Instagram at Kit Runaway. My Twitter at Kit Talk Sports. My Kofi is live and it's bouncing with essays about football history. Just did one about the 1980 San Diego Chargers. Yay! That's right, Eric Coriel. And you can find me at Facebook easy enough. If you really like tonight, drop something in the tip jar at PayPal at my email right here. You just want to like send comments or abuse, that's my email. That's where that goes. Okay, and one last plug, Life in the Time. Reggie put the Amazon link higher in the chat, but this is some local artists, including yours truly, including Lee, including Patty, including uh, Poet Khan. And we all put this together during the pandemic, and I think it's a wonderful example of community persevering. So I hope you check that out. And I'll let Richie officially close the night. All right, man. Um... <laughs> By the way, like the bad timing of, of Zoom of Zoom uh, is you were like, leave a tip and I'm writing in the chat, do it. And then you're like, or send abuse. So it just it just came out wrong in the chat. You know, terrible timing. Um, <laughs> but yo, yeah, I'm going to leave that on the on the YouTube channel. Uh, definitely check out Life in the Time. Um, it was, you know, through a grant, through a nonprofit. So, you know, we're not supposed to make a profit off of them uh it is available through amazon if you want to purchase a physical copy but if you go to our website there is a, a free pdf download if you just want to check it out and read it but it's it's been really cool to, to kind of be part of that kind of my first process of, of being a, a publisher uh through through border senses and uh yeah we got a lot of great things planned in october uh we've been talking a lot about this meetup on the 22nd of course every monday we have these these open mics um so if you haven't already like one thing i recommend is subscribing to our youtube channel uh i have a lot of videos that i'm going to upload soon of uh, fresh cuts which is just like another series where where it's kind of like a tiny desk concert you know but for for poets and songwriters in el paso and and people who are coming passing through um so check that out, subscribe to our channel. And also it's a good way to get the list early. If you want to sign up early for these open mics, it's probably the first place that I post it. Um, so if you subscribe and click that little bell. Uh, anyway, yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, I don't want to go on too long and I'm not going to perform because last time I performed like zoop, my whole computer crashed. So that was probably a sign. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to stick to live performances. Uh, I got I got some personal Little stuff coming up in the works uh and probably another jazz and poetry night with the live jazz band and um <clears throat> i think i'm gonna do a solo set at a at a local record store because it's a cool setting uh i don't know maybe maybe i'll just I'll, I'll bring a couple other peeps in there but uh otherwise guys this is our space thank you so much for joining us here you're always welcome let's just uh, take care of each other you know and, and support and 
you know, buy those books, buy those, buy that merch, you know, or at least share the links. Cause if you, you know, money's tight sometimes, if you can't buy, you know, you can do so much just by sharing uh, those links. All right. So with tonight for October, October is going to be so much fun. It really is. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye for the last stream. We'll be back next Monday. Thanks for tuning in to stay at home open mic. My name is Rich.